Wow. I can't believe we're already near the end of our Masterwork season. And I think it's because we've had such dynamic experiences with our guest conductors and our soloists. That's what stands out to me so far. Well, Masterwork 6 features a familiar face as the great Peter Ungen returns to the podium. Everyone's excited to make music with him again. And he's picked a program that I think of as like walking into a fine jewelry store with so many sparkles and colors and materials that compete for your attention until you finally get to the back of the store where they keep their rarest treasures. You know, Rossini had a knack for writing shiny music. It was always music that audiences could love right away. And we start our concert with his overture to La Gazza Ladra, which means the thieving magpie. Big snare drum rolls start us off with a fanfare that welcomes everyone inside. And then Rossini starts foreshadowing the musical drama you'd experience in the rest of the opera. You know, there's a, a maid, and she's accused of being a jewel thief, but the thief is actually a magpie. Gotta love opera, right? Well, anyway, the music is great. And speaking of great... How about that we have Rhapsody in Blue on this program? It just turned 100 years old this February. Ah, oh, that opening clarinet glissando. It is so stressful, but so much fun. There's nothing else like it for us clarinetists in the orchestra. We almost feel like we're going back in time. You know, that iconic opening is famous because the first clarinetist to play it was just trying to make George Gershwin laugh. The guy's name was Ross Gorman, and he took what Gershwin actually wrote, which was a low trill, and then a scale up to the first high note of the melody, and he smeared the scale notes together in the middle to make that sound. It's not the easiest thing to do, but Gershwin not only laughed, he loved it. And he told Gorman to keep it that way. And Hello? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, well, I'm in the middle of, I'm in the middle of talking to people right now. Uh-huh. There's a pianist in Rhapsody in Blue? Are you sure? Who is it? Michelle Can? Oh, she's great. <sighs> um... Was there always a piano in Rhapsody in Blue? Do other clarinet players know about this? Okay, I, I, I gotta go. Let's move on. Before we get to the Gershwin, our excellent soloist, Michelle Kahn, will take us through something truly groundbreaking with Florence Price's piano concerto in one movement. Here's the cool part. Price was a trailblazer the first African-American woman to break through the classical ceiling with her symphonic creations. And this concerto feels personal, like she's weaving together stories from her heritage into every phrase, making not just music, but I think a narrative that speaks to all of us. We're really finding some of those rare treasures now, especially with Michelle Kahn at the piano. Finally, thinking about the deeply personal stories in music, we conclude by taking you through Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony, which is so triumphant by the end and so beautiful in the middle. Just wait until you hear the gorgeous horn solo in that second movement. But it doesn't start out that way at all. It opens cold, ominous, fearful. I think about the pressures this man must have felt in his life dark songs of fate that Tchaikovsky lays out patiently and then works and reworks into hope and light. It's genius. And it leaves you feeling really happy and fortunate. You can't help yourself. But you can help yourself reserve a seat by getting your tickets now. Peter Ungen is one of those musicians who brings out the very best in us. And I invite you wholeheartedly to be part of the experience. I'll see you there.